Careers in the graphic communications and print industry lead to many creative, high-tech opportunities. At Print18, Nick Gowerlock, Sales Operation Manager at Heidelberg, made a presentation to hundreds of high school and college students, encouraging them to consider the graphic arts industry as a career path. Here, Nick talks about finding your future in the graphic communications industry. Hi, my name is Nick Gowerlock, and if you are a high school student looking for an awesome potential career path, you've come to the right place because I'm gonna talk about the graphic arts industry. Maybe you have never heard these two things in the same sentence, graphic arts industry and hitting the jackpot. But hang with me because I honestly think you getting involved or considering the graphic arts industry will lead you to so many opportunities, everything from internships to finding mentors, plenty of scholarship money available. Maybe after school you wanna go straight into the workforce there's an incredible amount of companies looking to hire young people. Perhaps you want to go to college and pursue a full-time degree. Also, colleges around the United States who have dedicated programs. So no matter what it is you want to do, I really think there's a chance to connect with the graphic arts industry and excel. Along the presentation, I'm going to share my journey as a high school student because it wasn't all that long ago that I was sitting in your same shoes. I had no idea what I wanted to do in the future, but I fell in love with the printing industry. And since then, I have been to over 30 countries around the world. And I feel happy to wake up Monday through Friday and really love the work that I'm doing because I'm so passionate about it. And that's what I would love to see for you, to find something that really allows you to get out of bed every day and be happy. My goal is to take you from what I call point A to point B in the presentation. We're going to talk about all these opportunities, but if you ask me, it's time wasted if I don't provide the tools and the advice and the guidance to help you actually take advantage of the opportunities and do it on your own. So that's my objective here. By the end of the presentation, you'll have everything you need to take the next step. I don't think high school has changed a lot since I was in it. It's a tough time. There's a lot of pressure to figure out what are you going to do after school and is it going to be something that you're truly happy with. But with the graphic arts and printing industry, there are a lot of opportunities out there depending what it is you want to do. Before we get into those, let's get into what I call Print 101 and look at how the world has changed with technology. Here you see in 2005, this is at the uh, unveiling of the new Pope, basically no one in the audience has a smartphone. Fast forward to 2013, everyone has either a tablet or a smartphone in their hands. And then when you look at the latest presidential election, no one in that audience is actually facing Hillary Clinton. They're all wanting to get selfies. So clearly there's something going on here. When you look at traditional ways of communication, you had not only the printing press, but also radio or even television. And what these were good at is basically giving one message to the masses, to millions of people, the same message. But looking at current day, there's a lot of different options to take that message, that communication, that advertisement, and craft it one-on-one -on -one with the target group that you want to connect with. And this has fundamentally changed how companies approach advertising and even the way that we just communicate day-to-day -day with other people in our lives. This doesn't mean that print is dead and the presentation is over. In fact, that notion is completely wrong. Without a doubt, print has changed. There are some things that have gone away that are no longer relevant and needed, like the phone book. But if you look in your everyday life, it is literally everywhere. And there are so many segments of printing that are unaffected from media and change, and they will never fail to exist. For example, your Cheerios box. No matter what happens with digital technology and the internet, you're still gonna need packaging printed for your cereal. Same thing goes with, let's say, the t-shirt you put on or the type of toothpaste that you buy. There's a lot of different print out there, so don't get the notion that just because social media and the internet 
um, is becoming more prevalent, that that automatically means that printing is going away. Don't forget that printing is pretty dang cool. So everything from graphic banners that fit entire buildings to 3D printing to let's say the share a, a Coke program where every label has a unique name, even augmented reality that connects print and the internet. There's so much innovation taking place and really, really cool advancements that um, the thought that printing has not changed and remains unrelevant is not true at all. Let's shift gears here and talk about the opportunities that are available to you. One thing you need to know is that in the industry, the majority of people are nearing retirement. What that means is that there's a desperate need for young people and for those who are willing to work hard and really be open-minded to learn, you can accelerate your career and move a lot faster compared to other industries. What I also love about print and graphic arts, for this to be executed from start to finish, it requires so many different disciplines and skill sets, whether it's graphic design, coding and IT, R&D, you need salespeople, you need executives, you need people who are actually physically printing the printed products and getting it from raw material paper out to a shipment going to the end customer. So you've got a whole ecosystem of different skill sets and talents and that's why I want to drill home the point that it's not a one size fits all. Three big advantages. We talked about career advancement depending what your ambitions are and where you want to go. I believe that in the industry you can go there a lot faster compared to others because of the opportunity with the aging workforce. Shaping the future of personalization. You know more than any other generation how to successfully market and to connect with target audiences. And having that insight and knowledge is of huge value to the printing industry as it continues to evolve and more successfully execute that type of targeted marketing. And there are changes every year happening in the world of print and it almost can be overwhelming at times. So don't think that there are no changes and maybe once every 10 years you have a new breakthrough. Uh, things are happening all the time. How do you get started? Even in your own high school, if you think of taking photography classes, getting involved with the yearbook, Maybe your school even has a graphic arts program where they print the materials for the district. Could even be through the organization Schools USA. These are four simple ways to start getting involved and get a better idea of what exactly are the different components of graphic arts. In my journey at Roseville High School in Minnesota, I coincidentally ended up at a school that had one of the best graphic arts programs in the whole country. And the gentleman in blue, his name is Brian Hogue, he helped through a, a set of classes teach kids how you go from an idea, a concept, a design in your head to actually designing that on the computer, to printing it, and then to delivering it. So we ran a student-run business that it wouldn't be uncommon each school year to do over six figures in sales, printing for all the different school clubs, organizations, and the district. And that's what I loved, learning how to go from start to finish and do that in a student-run business. Work experience. Let's say after high school, going to college isn't the right fit for you and you wanna find a job and enter the workforce, you could do that a variety of different ways. One, the printing industry has associations throughout the country and they are built to serve the surrounding companies. And certainly one aspect of that is talent and workforce. So they have quite often many opportunities available and the chance to contact them and put in your name that you're interested. You can also just do simple 101 networking, ask your friends, your family members. You never know who might work at what company in your area. Lastly, 
simply searching online. That's a, a method that never fails as well. Find the local companies in your area. You could even contact the human resources department. Tell them that you're a student that's interested to learning more about the industry, wondering if there's a tour or an internship opportunity. I'm sure they would love to hear from you and you've got nothing to lose by sending out an email like that. When I've thought about the different opportunities that are out there, I put them into two buckets. One I call formal opportunities and the other one is the opportunities that you create for yourself. Both of them are out there and I wouldn't be afraid of having to be flexible and do one or the other. So what I mean by that, formal opportunities, that could be ones that are posted if there's a job board at your high school or maybe your teacher knows of a company that has every summer a formal program. Certainly go after those that interest you and apply. But if there aren't any of those formal opportunities, don't be afraid to create them yourself. And if you're really passionate about what you're after, I think you're going to roll up your sleeves and you'll find a solution to getting it done. It could be Google searches, going on LinkedIn, finding local print associations that have the opportunities. Um, there's even a, a magazine called Printing Impressions. Every year they have the top 400 companies around the country and they list through the states and cities what are the names and who are the contact information. So right there is a variety of different ways to going about finding opportunities. When I was in high school, instead of working at fast food in the summers, I said, I'm really interested in printing. Uh, let me contact the local association. And they had every summer a program where not only could I make money, but I had great opportunities with leading companies in the Midwest to get hands-on experience. I also pursued a dream of mine in college to work for a company called Heidelberg and do internships, but they didn't have a formal program that existed. So through a lot of networking and being persistent, I had two opportunities, one summer going to Heidelberg, Germany, and another summer going to Sao Paulo, Brazil. So depending what you're passionate about, if there's a will, there's a way. Mentors are crucial, I feel, in order to getting from where you're at today to where it is that you want to develop to. And one of uh, favorite quotes of mine is from a guy called Harvey Picar, and he says, ordinary life is pretty complex stuff. I think that's spot on. So if you can find a mentor that's a ninja warrior or Yoda or some kind of wizard, great for you. I haven't found that, but what I have found are what I call everyday superheroes. And these are the, the people surrounding you that are willing to put in the time to really helping you achieve your goals. So what that looked like for me in high school, I had my two graphic arts instructors. In college, I had a professor who spent a lot of time helping me develop. And even in the working world, I've got three guys, one from Brazil, Boston, and Israel, who I can go to with essentially any challenges that I have or just picking their brain of how they achieved what they did and how can I one day get there as well. How would you go about finding one? Really, it can be anyone. It could be your high school cross-country coach or maybe it's uh, the boss where you're currently working or friends or family members. There's not one cookie cutter answer to who mentors could be. My advice is identify one or two people that you think could really give you some solid advice and be proactive in approaching them and ask if you could have a half an hour or maybe an hour of their time and prepare some questions and just capture what it is that you want to do Maybe they've done it as well. And how can you move from point A to point B effectively? Education. If you think you want to carry on, whether it's a community college or a full-time school, there are programs around the entire US. They have different names, but essentially they're talking about the same thing. So you may need to Google quite a few different names. 
And the reason that that is, is because the industry is transforming and moving so fast that it's not like there's one name that fits all and nothing has changed. I just put a few examples of colleges. If you were living in Illinois, here's over five examples of colleges that have dedicated programs. But odds are not all of you listening to this are from Illinois. So you should go to pgsf.org. Not only are they an incredible scholarship foundation, but they also have lists of graphic arts programs from around the entire country listed by state. I went to a school called RIT in Rochester, New York, and they had a dedicated print program that lasted four years. And for me, that was really money well spent. College, as we know, is not cheap, but this was a school that had leading partnerships, amazing instructors and, and um, professors, and they really helped give you a skill set so when you graduated from school, you could go straight into the workforce and make an impact. Scholarships, who doesn't love free money? And I have to say there's an incredible amount that these incredible organizations have dedicated to supporting students who are wanting to pursue a degree in this field and who are willing to work hard. And I wasn't a 4.0 student by any means. So don't feel that, hey, if I don't have perfect grades, I shouldn't even apply. You've got nothing to lose. And if you're truly passionate, I think that's going to show through your application. The organizations can be everything from the local associations, the college or community college that you're going to. And there's also a variety of outside organizations who, like I mentioned, PGSF, have dedicated funds and resources to supporting students. So you should check those out. What next? My goal, take you from point A to point B. So if you had a chance to write down or recall a lot of these tactics and tips that I mentioned of rolling up your sleeves, not being afraid to send emails, make phone calls, ask around and network, get involved with mentors, I think this is gonna put you on the right path. And at the end of the day, your goal should be to find what you're passionate about. For everyone listening, I don't think the odds are that 100% of you are gonna be passionate about the graphic arts, and that's okay. But if you are interested, I think following these steps are gonna put you um, on the right path to finding what you're truly passionate about. If you have any questions or need advice, feel free to contact me. I also want to encourage you if you're in the Midwest to ask your high school instructor to take you to the annual print show. It's a trade show for the industry. It happens in Chicago every fall and they have an incredible career fair day that has a lot of opportunities to connect with employers and colleges that are around the country. I hope you found this useful and contact me with questions. Thank you.